Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to leave you inspired and ready for your day. Let's talk about the importance of celebrating other people's success. So often we go on social media and we see highlight reels of people's lives. We see them smiling, showing off their new jobs, partners, and that can often lead us to feeling jealous, especially when we're not in a good place ourselves. But I'm here to tell you that celebrating the success of others actually draws that same energy to you through your good vibes and blessings. When we celebrate and give our blessings to others, we are telling the universe, yes, I want this in my life. And we then begin to attract the people and circumstances that can help us to achieve our own success. On the contrary, when we are jealous of others, we tell the universe, no, we don't want success. And we repel it from coming into our own lives by giving our negative vibrations. And guess what? We attract that same negative energy to ourselves. I cannot stress the importance of celebrating other people's success just like it happened to yourself or a loved one. Successful people relish in the success of others because they understand that there's enough resources and opportunities for everyone. Remember, someone else's success does not take away from yours. We all have the ability to succeed, but it will happen on our own unique timelines. So next time you see someone win, send them your blessings and watch how fast you attract that same success into your own life. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. So how did you deal with that? Did you tell your close friends and family? Did you keep it a secret? I had $278 to my name, no job, a failed business venture, mm -hmm. ended up having to apply for social assistance. All natural sweetener, flavor all. 20 flavors to choose from. The perfect substitute for sugar and artificial sweetness. Flavor all by Greenish. Flavor all from Greenish. Now available at Rexall Pharmacies. What does luxury mean to you? Luxury. In India, I discovered that true luxury isn't something you buy off a shelf. True luxury is a feeling that you are the Maharani of your world and it can be all designed around you. All the beauty is yours, all the music is yours. India showed me that luxury doesn't follow designers and brands. True luxury follows its own heart. Incredible India. Next up on the show, we have Tony Colley, who is the founder of Be One to Give, Canada's first barrier free food waste diversion program for retailers who have a surplus food at the end of the day. Tony, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you for having me. Just a fun fact, guys. <laughs> He worked at a nonprofit organization and they were one of the first people to hire me as an MC. So thank you. You're welcome. That was probably 10 or more years ago. We were hosting it our was AGM. A long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. You were interning at Rogers and we were looking for an MC for our AGM. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So I want to talk about all the great stuff you're doing. Let's talk about B1 to Give, how it got started, and why. So in 2016, my work history had consisted of 16 years with two national banks, mm -hmm. four years with that nonprofit organization that yeah. uh, we had met, and then two years as an entrepreneur. Okay. Um, at that same time in my life, I had $278 to my name, no job, a failed business venture, mm -hmm. ended up having to apply for social assistance, and became food insecure for the first time in my life at 44 years old. Wow. So that was a really rough time in my life and I fell into a depression, of course. Uh, about two months later, I did secure a part-time job working in hospitality for various catering companies. Mm -hmm. And I, no, I wasn't making a lot of money, but I was just simply grateful to have more than I had the month before. Mm -hmm. um, about six months after acquiring that job, 
I read an article in the National Post about Canada's $31 billion food waste issue. Mm -hmm. Now, food waste wasn't a thing for me because I was food insecure at the time, yeah. but I read the article from start to finish, and at the end, I said out loud, they should feed this food to the homeless. Yeah. Sort of forgot about the article and went about my business. About six months later, it was uh, roughly September of 2017, I was working an event with our largest catering partner, and mm -hmm. at the end of the event, the CEO had offered me a job. So about maybe two weeks later, I was on-site managing my first event, and at the end, we had about 100 box lunches left over. Mm -hmm. So for the first time, I'm now seeing our food waste issue firsthand. Yeah. And I offered to rescue what I could, and did so on my bike every event thereafter, mm -hmm. until about July 2018, when for the first time, I couldn't rescue all the food. Yeah. I got extremely frustrated with myself, and I was on my way to the shelter, mad because I had put myself in this position yeah. without the proper resources for an employer who really had no other option than to throw this food in the garbage. Mm -hmm. In that moment, an Uber Eats driver whips past me on his bike with one of those mm -hmm. bags on his back and I made a side comment, I need one of those bags. Yeah. When I got home, I researched the bag and I saw that it was only 40 bucks and mm -hmm. in that moment, I, I had a aha, I guess my yeah. aha moment. Yeah. And I said, I wonder if I could hire an Uber driver to do rescues for me and how would I pay them to do it? Yeah. Uh, and then with that, I realized, well, there are a lot of other retailers out there. I was one person managing one event for one catering company. Mm -hmm. There were, or there are upwards of 100 catering companies, <coughs> excuse me, in the city of Toronto. Mm -hmm. There are grocery stores that have hot food counters. There are event venues, hotels, convention centers, a lot of companies that are preparing food on a daily basis. And at the end of the day, they have no other recourse than to throw it in the garbage. Yeah. So the possibilities of who I could offer this service to really blew my mind. And in that moment, I began to research food waste, food insecurity, mm -hmm. and I learned that at this point, Canada now had a $49 billion food waste issue and 4 million Canadians were suffering from food insecurity. Yeah. So I took it upon myself to start developing Canada's first barrier-free food waste diversion program. Mm -hmm. And about a year later, I launched Be One to Give. Amazing, that's incredible. <laughs> Um, you know, when you were talking about you had food insecurity issues yourself, I'm sure there are so many people in Toronto that also face that, you know, especially, and they're scared to tell people and their friends or family because they want to keep an image. So how did you deal with that? Did you tell your close friends and family? Did you keep it a secret? How did you deal with that? So nobody knew that I was dealing with anything. Um, yeah. I kept it to myself. Actually, my friends found out probably three or four months ago. Wow. Uh, I'm lying, sorry. My friends found out when I launched the business because yeah. I, when I launched the business on Facebook, I actually disclosed that the reason why the business was developed was because I had experienced food insecurity myself. Yes. Uh, but the, the in-depth story behind what I was going through, nobody knew. Yeah. Um, I sort of faked it. Until yeah, I'm sure. I faked it for three years. Um, yeah. I was on social assistance. Nobody knew. My mother knew. I shouldn't say nobody knew. My, my mother is the you know, most important person mm -hmm. in my life and she was the one person that knew what I was going through and she was supporting me during this time. Uh, I did have some food, but at the, you know, I didn't eat breakfast for about a year. Wow. My first meal of the day was around 2 p.m. in the afternoon and that's how I lived because that was when I needed you know, substance in my body. I could go without eating in the morning, but by 2, 3 o'clock I was hungry, so I would have my first meal and then about six hours later, I would have my second meal. I went to friends' birthday parties, I went to house parties, I went to dinners. I don't know where I found the money to go or even enjoy or, or have a social life, but I faked it. Nobody yeah. knew what I was dealing with and I didn't want anybody to know. I just wanted to go through the process. I had put myself in this position. I wanted my friends to be my friends and not pity me in the situation I was in. I, if mm -hmm. they wanted to know how I was doing, it wasn't because of what I was dealing with. It was because they were my friend and they just were wondering, how is my friend doing today? Mm. Um, so I wanted to keep it to myself and I kept it to myself up until about six months ago when I shared the story with my friends. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. I think that it's amazing from the outside looking in, you know, people might have corporate jobs or great jobs, but that doesn't necessarily mean they have enough money to buy food, yeah. which is um, scary. I did see that 58% of all food produced is wasted. Is wasted, yes. Um, let's talk about that and let's talk about who's getting this food. Where are you guys delivering this? So, as you said, 58% of all food in Canada is wasted. 86% mm -hmm. of that is not donated or redistributed, <clears throat> and it can be. Mm -hmm. This is edible food, nothing is wrong with it. There is just no other place for the retailer 
to send it or put it. A lot of retailers don't have the capacity. That was actually something I learned when I offered to rescue food from my first event for the company I was working for. Yeah. Um, I asked them why they didn't donate the food and they said they don't have the capacity to do it. So yeah. that's when I knew that I could do something. I couldn't do a lot, but I could rescue some food and feed it to those who were going through the same situation I was going through. Uh, I did, would always take some for myself as well, but I made sure that I took a lot for the others because there was so much food mm -hmm. all the time. So of that 86%, 86% <coughs> excuse me, um, I'm now trying to uh, tackle that number mm -hmm. by rescuing, redistributing food from the type of retailers that I was working with. Mm -hmm. So prepared food, any retailer that has the hot food counters like grocery stores, uh, hotels are preparing food on a regular basis, convention centers, event venues, other caterers, mm -hmm. all of those types of companies are preparing food on a daily basis. And at the end of the day, they have no other recourse other than to throw this food in the garbage. Mm -hmm. So I was able to I saw the need, saw an opportunity, mm -hmm. and simply took it upon myself to do something. Mm -hmm. So are you delivering it specifically to homeless shelters and people in need, or can people call if they don't have food and maybe order something from you? So we are directly B2B. So we okay. work with the retailers directly to, for two reasons. One, to maintain quality control of the food. Yeah. And secondly, because we want to let retailers, sorry, we want to give retailers an opportunity to lower their carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. So in order to do that, we deal with them directly and we redistribute to shelters directly. So we are sort of the Uber Eats of food rescue where we mm -hmm. pick up and drop off within the hour of receipt, mm -hmm. but we are strictly B2B. Mm -hmm. So if, if there's a third party that's involved, we cannot rescue that food because, of course, uh, quality control of the food and also cross-contamination. Part of our program actually does identify food allergens and food intolerances within the labels that we provide our retailers. Mm -hmm. So when they are sending us food, the container actually identifies what is in the what is inside mm -hmm. and any food allergens that may exist so that the you, the end recipients in this case are able to de decipher exactly whether they can eat this food or not mm -hmm. but we do deal only with shelters for now yeah. we may expand that to community um, sorry rooming houses or community kitchens mm -hmm. but for right now we're dealing strictly with shelters because shelter users are the pri are the well Obviously, they don't have a home, yeah. so a food bank really doesn't benefit them because they yeah. don't have a place to store this food. Yeah. And if they, don't have, if they don't have a place to store the food, that means they don't have a place to cook the food. Yeah. So we want to be able to service them primarily, mm -hmm. but we will expand that service. I'm sure that there will become a time that we will have too much food, mm -hmm. so then we can expand that service and, and start giving food out to rooming houses and community kitchens that could easily disseminate this food to other local um, kitchens or community yeah. agencies that they're dealing with. I think that's great and I really love the name of your company, Be One To Give. I think it's so important about giving back and you know, being of service to others, not just yourself. So talk to us about how it's felt, you know, giving back and how has it changed your life? <laughs> so I mean, coming from the position of being food insecure, um, I know what it's like to have surplus food given to me at this, at, actually I was taking food from the events as well, so yeah. I knew what it was like to have you know, an abundance of food in my fridge at a point in time. Mm -hmm. But there are others who don't have that opportunity. Yeah. I have a home, um, I had a roof over my head, yeah. I had clothes on my back, and I had a refrigerator that I could store food. Mm -hmm. The only issue was that I could not afford this yeah. food. Mm -hmm. So having the opportunity to rescue some of this food from my former employer, yes, I would take some for myself, but I would take most of it and deliver it to a shelter. Mm -hmm. So giving back was just something, I guess it was ingrained in me. Yeah. Um, I grew up with parents who would always have fundraisers or part of a, a church organization that were always doing things for the community. Mm -hmm. I never anticipated being in this space. You know, working in a corporate job for, for over 20 years, the last thing on my mind was, how can I combat food waste? Yeah. It wasn't even something that triggered me. Working for the nonprofit organization that we met, my, that was my way of giving back. I thought by in, you know, putting myself in a job that where I would be able to execute fundraising initiatives, uh, develop partnerships, cre uh, create a donation funnel for the organization, I felt that was my way of giving back. Yeah. And then I realized I still wasn't fulfilled with that, mm -hmm. which is why I became an entrepreneur, because I wanted to work with various organizations you know, that were working on social issues, not realizing that I would end up in a situation mm -hmm. as a candidate. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. as, as being food insecure. Yeah, uh, so that just sort of, that give back um, mentality was always within me. Mm -hmm. It just manifested differently when it came to being food insecure. Yeah. Knowing what it's like to be hungry, I said, you know, this, this food can be eaten by so many other people. Why are we throwing it in the garbage? I will just organically start taking this food. I put it in those larger usable grocery bags on my bike every event 
and rolled over to a shelter and delivered it to those who would need it best, mm -hmm. need it most, sorry. Yeah. And Tag TV has over 55 million viewers, 22,000 oh, awesome. <laughs> in the GTA. So Hi, Tag TV viewers. <laughs> <laughs> anyone that's watching that's a corporation or is in the food business, how can they help you to continue your mission? Well, they would simply have to reach out and we could discuss the program with them. The program is broken down into three different categories with three different price points. Okay. So we offer A, B, or C, mm -hmm. 30 pickups, 20 pickups, or 10 pickups a month. Okay. And the price point is at $10, $20, or $50 a pickup. Mm -hmm. Those price points are usually, sorry, those price points are based upon the weight of the food. Yeah. So 10 pounds or less is $10, 50 pounds or more is $50 and $20 covers anything in between. Mm -hmm. So if a retailer wants to get involved, they will be able to determine what their amount of food waste is. They would simply call us, we would have a meeting with them to discuss the program, go through logistics as to what we do, how we do it, mm -hmm. um, show them all, show them the process, the operational piece, and then they would sign up, register, yeah. and we simply start collecting their food. It's yeah. an overnight process. So yeah. if you join on Monday, we could probably be moving food by Tuesday. Wow. It's really that fast. Amazing. So are you doing this full time now? No, I am still working. Uh, I work part time as a project manager for a digital marketing agency. Okay. Uh, but I started this business on a full time basis. Yeah. But having learned my lesson from the last time that as an entrepreneur, you need to have steady cash flow. For sure. I was able to secure a part time job yeah. that allows me to do things like this, you know, yeah. during the middle of the day, come and yeah. have an interview with you about and sharing information about my program. Yeah. So that the program does pay for itself, mm -hmm. but it is not paying me to run it. Yeah, and all of the energy that you're putting into this, you're getting so much recognition. I did see you on CBC recently. Yes. So talk to, talk to us about that experience and uh, what it was like. So CBC hosted, um, actually it's the second year that they've done this, it's called the CBC Community Champions. And mm -hmm. people are able to nominate anyone within the community that they feel is doing good work. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many nominations they received, but they narrowed them down to 10. And I was one of the 10. And then from that 10, the, the community had to vote for who they felt yeah. should be awarded one of the five as one of the five community champions. Mm -hmm. And I was fortunate to have been named one of them. Yeah. Um, so that's fantastic. Yeah. That gave me, again, additional press, which is, you know, fantastic for a new business. Mm -hmm. But now CBC is actually looking to do a broader story on me, sort of a day in the life of B1 to give, mm -hmm. following me from first call from the retailer mm -hmm. to getting out of my home, going down to the retailer, packing up the food. I will either use TTC or car share yeah. in order to move the food. Mm -hmm. So whichever works in that particular moment, we will use that method. They will follow me along from retailer to shelter, interviewing both the retailer and the shelter. So that's a really awesome opportunity to showcase the partnerships that we've established yeah. to date. Um, but it just, it's just highlighting and profiling exactly what we're doing in the community, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And what kind of impact have you seen on the community with your business? Well, I'll share with you that we've rescued, since September 2017, I've rescued over 11,000 pounds of food, wow. feeding over 8,300 people in the city of Toronto. So yeah. that I've seen your videos. I love that. Thank you so They're, much. They always feel <laughs> just so good to see you. And you always have a nice, vibrant smile. Because I can tell you feel good about oh, it. Oh, I do. I know? love what I'm doing. Course, I, yeah. I think it's awesome. I never, as I said, I never anticipated this becoming a business. I was yeah. doing this as a volunteer. Yeah. And it was at that one moment when I couldn't rescue all the food that I realized, okay, well, wait a minute. Like, there's a problem here. Mm -hmm. I need to find a way to rescue this food properly. Mm -hmm. And that thought triggered other thoughts that, you know, this snowball effect where I realized that there was a, there was a gap in the marketplace. And when it mm -hmm. came to retailers like the ones I'm servicing, when it comes to their prepared food waste. Mm -hmm. Nobody's collecting it, yeah. it's going in the garbage. Mm -hmm. uh, retail food waste makes up 10% of our national issue, which is $5 billion worth of wow. good food going in the garbage every year. So we can easily redistribute that, redistribute that food. Mm -hmm. There are other food rescue agencies out there that are doing amazing work. Mm -hmm. I found that none of them were targeting this particular type of food. Yeah. So that's why I've narrowed my niche into that particular type of food, which is the prepared food, that hot food that's already cooked. It's been uh, sorry, prepared all day, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, there's no other place to put it but the garbage. Yeah. So I would s say to retailers, consider us the last stop mm -hmm. on the supply chain before you throw this food in the garbage. Just give us a call and we'll come pick it up. Yeah. And where can our viewers connect with you on social media and, of course, be one to give? So. The name B1 to give, if you spell it out, is proper, but when the website is actually the letter B, the number one, the number two, mm -hmm. and the word give. So it's b1togive.ca. Mm -hmm. uh, on Instagram, it's at b one to give, and Twitter is the same. Mm -hmm. But as long as they understand that it's not the title of the words B1 to give, it's actually the letter B, the number one, the number two, mm -hmm. and the word give. 
All right. Well, thank you so much, Tony. It's thank been you such for a having pleasure. me. It's an awesome, it's an I, awesome time. Yeah, and thank you so much for doing what you're doing because I think it's extremely important. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as through iPhone and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.